split. And both games was won in the late game, where Hans Sama and Senkux actually managed to do very well. Let's see what happens in this pick and ban phase. Fnatic bans their own Yasuo. And their own Zoe. I think Cubs is one of the best Zoe players right after Perks, so it feels weird. Also Talia bans from Fnatic. So they don't want to first pick Talia, what do you think about that? I mean, I think Talia is uh, the best early game champion right now in the jungle. I think uh, she has troubles against Camille and Nocturne, especially, um, since it's really easy to catch her off guard. But she's still, she's still a flex pick, which is pretty important right now in this meta, but also has a really strong early game. For the first game, Tarek is left open after the initial ban phase. Tarek Master Yi. Is it something where Fnatic can first pick a Tarek here and then say, you know what, oh. we now can do the strategy of just putting all the resources on the caps. That's <laughs> a first pick it. Tarek. They're going to try it. They're locking the Tarek to start us off and then you've got any hyper carry really that you want to combine with that. First and question then, Jankos. On G2 Esports, if it's Tarek Master Yi, who plays the Master Yi? You don't want to know the fish show. It's probably it's Perks. Perks. It's Perks. No, That's it's the not. answer no, of a Tarek not. player. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Perks is the chat in that relationship. Going now, back though. On the other side, we have Shen and Lulu locked in for Misfits. I mean, that kind of looks like basically Protect the Carry team comps. I'm curious what will Hansama play. Also, we could see Nocturne here being played uh, on the side of Misfits. Also, Camille fits the comp, right? You can just kind of go in the, the ult, Shen ult, and then Lulu on the top of you. So, now we have Kai'Sa, picked Ooh. by Fnatic. I really want to highlight this is a flex pick. This is a flex pick. I've seen a couple of mid laners play this in solo queue. Same kind of style as the Master Yi, where you have a Tarek kind of walking around with you and buffing you. But overall, yeah. Camille has been taken away by Misfit, so it's going to Good be call. basically Camille going in comp. Uh, Camille should have really high pressure right now, I think. Are you surprised there was no Master Yi from Fnatic? I mean, come on. This is what I was talking about. I mean, right now we can see two supports being picked, so we already see that Rakan will go bot lane and Tarik will be probably mid lane. And now the question is whatever will the Fnatic pick with the Tarik to make it work. Maybe Misfits will ban E, maybe we. I, I'm they saying Kaiser so far is going to be the pick. Misfits are banning Karma, so this is probably um, taking it away maybe from Soas. Karma is also a flex pick can play here pretty much everywhere, but uh, it seems like Tarik will be mid lane so far. So phase two overall seems very hard to ban in. There's so many different options. Like as a pro team right now, what do you think when you enter the second ban phase? Is it just like there's a few key things you things you always got to remove, or is it just pure comp phase? I mean, I think since the patch hit lately, um, there is no meta. Everyone just kind of plays uh, whatever they want to. We saw also Heimer Donger being played. We saw also AD Carries being played. We saw other supports uh, being played on the bot lane, even tanks. So. I think you can kind of play whatever you want to. And Yi has been taken away from Miss, uh, from uh, Fnatic. Give me that so is it, is it Kai'Sa mid lane? It's I, gonna mean, be, I don't know, it maybe. It caps Kai'Sa. Broxa is gonna be on that Tarek here. He has already tweeted how his solo queue experience with uh, Caps has been basically him running around on Nunu, Tarek, and Braum every game and just feeding everything to Caps. When I came back to the gaming house, I said, told my team that it's the carry jungle meta. But um, they laughed at me last time since it looks <laughs> like jungle is all about playing dogs now. It's pretty much Brom Tarik every time. Feels bad, man. Well, this game it seems to be the Tarik. We got three Jana. supports now. So both sides are going for a pretty heavy support index here. Morgana on one, Lulu, Shen. The Janna's been locked in. Now, Reckless has a few Janna solo queue games recently. I'm not saying it is going to be Reckless playing that, but there's always the possibility when you've got the Kaiser, maybe you want to put Reckless on that. I mean, it kind of looks like Kai'Sa will be the pick in the mid lane. I mean, yeah, it's already assured. So it's going to be kaisa Tari combo. Um, I think this combo works really well. I think Kai'Sa gets uh, fed really fast. This is something that a lot of the pro teams tested out. And uh, it seems like uh, Kai'Sa needs Ginzo and needs the jungle item. And then she spikes oh! super hard. Draven! That's Hans Summer's Draven! Hey, though. it was buff, man. That cheaper PT you can rush. We've already seen him being played also. Earlier today, we had LCK with Teddy playing it and doing really well despite, in the end, not winning the game. Overall, Jankos, we still got you for another 40 seconds. What do you think about the comps? I mean, I'm not sure about the Janna mid lane. Yeah, I know. I mean, this is something weird. I think, I think they're going to swap, swap last 20 seconds. Yeah, 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 they're going to swap in the end. That's our so predictions. Ja so Reckless is going to be... Reckless, by the way, is an eager uh, type of guy. He likes to play a lot of support if he's not playing AD Keres. Um, also, we have uh, Draven from Elsama. Yeah. What do you think about Misfits comp? I, mean, I think it looks pretty solid as long as uh, Maxlor uh, will lead them to victory. I think he's the shot caller in Misfits. He, they tend to play a lot 
around him. So I think as long as uh, Hans Sama can win the lane, and this is what Draven is for. He doesn't farm on the turret, he wants to win the lane, he wants to push. And then on top of it, we have Camille that can always go in with Shad and Lulu, so it's going to be entertaining. I love the smiles on both the coaches' faces. They're like, they're like yeah, I, I don't really know. I clicked random a few times. These are the champions we got. We've got a team composition. I'm a fan. I really want to see the feed caps strategy where he runs smite. Something that's really important for Misfits is to shoot, shut down the Kai'Sa. Because Misfits can actually play the lanes well. They have kind of a standard comp, even though it's Morgana, Lulu, Draven, it's uh, what, you, what you are used to. But uh, what Fnatic wants to do is basically put all the resources on Kai'Sa. Well, as the teams are loading onto the Rift, let's leave it to Law and the Misfits coach. You gave Draven uh, to Honsama. It's his favorite pick. What makes him so strong at the moment? Uh, he's really confident with the pick, and when we saw their bot lane picks, we knew that we just wanted to punish them for picking those champions, and Draven can do that. Well, all right. Good luck on that now. Let's head it over to the Rift for the last game of the day, Misfits versus Fnatic. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this game's going to be fun to this year. I can already sense it. I mean, first of all, it's Fnatic Misfits. So it's already great right there, uh, because Misfits, as we highlighted before, Despite not making playoffs last, but they could beat Fnatic. And every game was insane back and forth. Reckless said in his feature coming into this, they're some of the best players in Europe on this Misfits lineup. Sure, the teamwork maybe didn't work, or the strategy last split. But you can't say that players like Maxwell and Alfari and Hansama can't compete with the very best. And when you take someone like Hansama, who at the start of last split, we thought was perhaps the best AD carry in Europe, and you put him on his signature pick, when he came into the EU LCS from Millennium, everyone was like, you have to watch out for this guy's Draven. You have to be scared of this guy's Draven. Draven's been buffed, Bloodthirst has been buffed, Conqueror is really strong. Yep. That is where I'm looking for Misfits. It is definitely time to play Draven. Another one of the 80 carries that are now viable. Now, one thing we looked at coming into this was Reckless in solo queue. And as you guys can see, now he might actually die. Nope, flashing away from that one. Maxwell could still go for the chase if he wanted to, but as you can see, so many different picks here from Reckless Misfits will eventually back away. They're waiting in the bush for now. Actually going back in. Broxa there in front. Hinosang looking for flank oh, as well. There's the Dazzle flashed away from Hans Summer. Mickey takes a big chunk as well. Will Misfits continue this invade? They're so aggressive early on here. Fnatic having to run for the win because Maxlaw gets the stun onto Cap. Still the flash available for the Kaiser. The turn back. Look at those plasma stacks as well. Oh, they're Misfits still fighting. They're just it. dancing around in the jungle early on. And this game already packed with action only two minutes in. Oh, we can't really talk about why they're doing this yet, because there might still be a fight happening. They're still around the red buff. Maxwell jumps in, does not get in range. Maxwell down to half HP, Mickey there as well. Broxa stepping forward, looking to see if that red buff resets, because if it It's does, a very long level one fight. This keeps on going top lane. There's some action as well, but nowhere near as important as what's going on down here. Hillisang. Out it's not the over yet. Side. They're just going to keep pushing forward. Here oh, goes the no flash! There's the stun. Roxa flashes away. The dazzle not enough. Roxa will be the first to fall, and first blood goes to Misfits. But here comes the he flash first, and he steals the red buff and gets level two. Okay, okay. So the entire thing that happens here is when you're against this strategy, where you want to force feed this mid laner with smite caps in this case on the Kaiser. Teams really want to invade early on to try and disrupt this early clear because if you just let him do his own thing, he takes a red buff, he goes in mid, pushes mid, goes back and clears his camps. But if you invade early game, you can really try and slow him down. Misses didn't get the red buff though. It actually went over to caps because he flashed forward and he took it. So now, Misses got a first blood, but it didn't actually slow down caps that much because all the Misfits are also busy here at level one. You see Maxwell continually trying to engage. Box at least he gets out, but Senkos with the final auto attack gets the kill. Misfits able to stay around for so long. Flash oh, in It's from an Max. auto after the smite. <laughs> or the Q coming in from Caps. In the end, he gets it. That ward being placed towards the end was very important to maintain vision. So now you guys can see Caps is level four already. We just had the craziest, longest level one to try and stop him from getting ahead. He's now level four. And we Caps is level four and Brox is level one. Welcome to this strategy again. The entire goal is that Broxa is behind. Broxa does not get farm other than his Relic Shield stacks. Everything is force-fed onto Caps. He needs to complete his jungle item and get a Rage Blade. And you can suddenly start just winning the game focused around him. But it is a strategy that's been used already in pro play quite a few times. And it's actually not been that successful. 
these funnel strategies where you're forming all of those resources onto that one member. Tends to be about 50-50 win rate at the moment. Not always as effective as they could be. We've seen them pay off incredibly well. Master Yi Tarek, a good example of that. But we've also seen things like Nunu Karthus lose out in these sorts of matchups. Now, the rest of the map is a little bit more stationary at the moment. Yeah, and that's also an important thing to talk about because this kind of snowballs and forces the entire game to go in one direction, which is around Caps getting his farm and Misfits trying to stop it. It does mean that there is no jungle from Fnatic. They can't gank top and bot lane. So if you have lanes that can push forward, you're no longer afraid of the enemy jungler. He's never gonna be there. You can actually start warding in your lanes, you can play very aggressive. If the enemy team shows up, it's with Caps and Broxy together, and then you've had plenty of time to call. They've been missing. And generally, with their farmed air, the carry comp, you don't actually want to gank, because then you're losing valuable time where you're not either farming mid lane or you're jungle. Well, if you want to see what it's like firsthand to have all of these resources funneled oh, yeah. to you, jump on over to twitch.tv forward slash Riot Games 2. As you can see, the EU LCS POV stream beta continues with Fnatic's mid laner caps. Be sure to check that out, because it's going to be one to watch. And you just saw him buy a control ward, oh. even though he's the carry. Everyone take notes here. He bought a control ward on his way out. But this is definitely the kind of game you want to watch from Cap's perspective, because it's going to be all about him. He has three supports and a tank around him. And that's also why if Misfits shuts him down early, like they tried to do with the level one invade, Fnatic will have no damage. They literally can't really play the game then. It's everything around one player. It kind of tells the difference between these two teams as well and where they put their priority. Yeah. Max saw one of the key components of this composition for Misfits with a couple of supports buffing him up. He's the aggressive player on this team alongside Han Summer. Whereas Fnatic is saying, we can put all of our resources on Caps. He's the guy that's going to carry us. He did it on MSI, on yes. Yasuo. He's done it before. Reckless, that's old news. It's the Caps age now. It's still kind of extreme that the two-time MVP of the EULCS Reckless is playing Janna. And his only job is to protect Caps in that mid lane. But that's the way it is now. It's some of the unique strategies you can go for. Meanwhile, on the side of Misfits, we already highlighted. They don't need to fear the jungler in the side lanes because the jungler is running around with caps at this point. Brox is on a Taric. Maxwell can go for ganks if he wants to. That's a way to snowball your side lanes. Once you get level 6 in mid on Lulu, you can actually start trying to go to mid lane and win the 2v2. Potential tower dive happening. Shen ulti is available. No one is going to stop this from Teleport happening. Teleport cancelled. Hillisang being sacrificed here. He's going to try and jump away. The Sand United comes in as well. Hillisang Give it to Draven. surviving. Flashing away at the end. Using the teleport here as well. But and Summer can just knock him to the side and then take the kill for himself. Gets the stacks of adoration. And you can see Misfits playing to their key members. Yeah, that's what you want here if you're Misfits. Go to the side lane. Punish Fnatic for not being able to help them. Han Sama on Draven gets a big stack of cash right here. Just got a three-year contract with Misfits as well. And now he's the member they're looking at to be the main carry. All right. Last split, about 33% of his team's damage. Maxwell topping out. The jungle pool there, but we're going to be doing a lot more of that this time. Red buff here for Fnatic. Oh, invade and fight! Oh, the binding connects and Caps is down. Fnatic have nothing left. Misfits once again stating their dominance over Fnatic. Chasing Brox underneath the tower. Senkux gets the final shot, gets the double, and Misfits are 4-0 up. We already said this three or four times. The entire goal with invading in for Misfits is to stop Caps from just taking jungle camps. And if you shut down caps, there is no damage on Fnatic's side. So Misfits, time the bot lane play into an invade when red buff respawns, and they sit ready with a long range engage from a Camille, and caps dies. This is such a well played game from Misfits when it comes to shutting down this Kai'Sa here. That's a kill. That's a red buff being stolen. Broxa dies again. And look what happens mid lane with the minion wave. They're all dying. It's all wasted minions now because the whole goal for the for the funneling strat is that you kill your jungle camps, you go to mid lane, catch the midway, push it out, go back to your jungle, and you keep rotating all the time. You maximize farm. It's just lost a bunch. Is still ahead of Sankux at the moment in terms of farm. Will be behind on gold because Sankux has picked up those three kills. Yeah, and he needs to be much further ahead because he is 
technically dealing damage for two to three players, not just himself. So you kind of want to be comparing Maximor and Senkux's CS combined yes. against what Caps is getting. So he would be about 20 behind at the moment. And this is one of the reasons like Camille Lula was such a smart answer from Misfits because it's a combination in the early game that is super good at skirmishing. Because Lulu makes your Camille so tanky and still deals pretty decent damage at this stage in the game that Maxlaw gets enough time to kill an AD carry. Because let's not forget that. Caps is on Kaiser, it's still an AD carry. Base stats still were nerfed. You are extremely squishy. It's fantastic once you get your items, but it takes a long time to get them. And part of what really puts it online as a composition is having Brox to get to level six. He's still only sitting at level five. You need that cosmic radiance. You need the extra safety that Kaiser can play. Oh, baby! Oh, diving the tower! Reckless can't help his supporter, can't help himself! Hansama buying to be the best AD carry in the EU OCS! We have all tried to play against the Draven in the bottom lane that gets ahead in the early game. The only answer for you is to write, where's my jungler? I need help. Jungler, jungler, jungler. If you do it here, the jungler say, I, I'm not even here. I'm not even in the game. Mark pings on you. It's like, ask for caps, please. But caps can't leave his lane because he needs to power farm. There is no way Fnatic can stop Hansama on a 2 0 Draven from doing this all game long. They have to just get to a point where they can actually team fight with Caps. It's gonna be first tower as well for Misfits. A 5,000 gold lead at the 10 minute mark. Misfits are dismantling Fnatic the same way that G2 just dismantled Rocket. Look around the mid lane. Shen ult is ready again. Misfits can win this skirmish if they force the fight. Caps and Brox, however, they back away. Maxwell is now stealing Caps from Kaiser. We'll have another look at this bot lane because we talked about how strong Hound Summer is on this Draven. You can see exactly what he can do here. The moment the binding hits, there's nothing you can do. Obviously, the dodge was on its way. Oh. Breakers just in the last second gets it all off and does manage to get some healing. But this turret still died. Misfits are 5k gold ahead. BT is completed. Right now, we have 6,000 gold on Hansama. We only have 4,400 on the Kais. So, so who's boosting who? Yeah. Well, Hans Summer is boosting Misfits at the moment, I think you could say, along with the help of Maxor and Senkux. We said before, Misfits undefeated against Fnatic last split. Even though they didn't make it to the playoffs, they were the team that took down the champs. And it looks very much like we're on course for them to take them down at the start of this summer split. Classic Misfits, continuing the trend of always knowing how to beat Fnatic. This one was having seen this strategy for a week now at least. And, and that's one of the things, like the patch hit pretty close to LCS and it did mess up a lot of things for a lot of teams, but they still had two weeks to see this strategy in action. They've had games in LCK and LPL. The top lane are Alfari and Maxlor. So as dodges away, gets the hexagon made him on as well with the silence into the chop, the statue. Oh, that's, that's why you bring the big dogs in this sort of game. So as showing why he deserves this top spot for Fnatic. Alfari flashes away, but the charm comes out with the quickness as well from Hillersang looking for that final Caps shot. Is, coming. is on his way, misses with the Void Seeker, but can continue to chase if he wants. Instead, backs away and they'll look, just look for this top lane tower. That could have been another kill here, but it all starts with Soas on his own. He was chosen over Whipple for this game here. He's left on his own. He knows there's no backup coming for him if he gets ganked early. And he wins the 2v1. TP was used later by Hillisang. That means the bot lane turret dies. And Fnatic didn't get a tower out of that. They didn't even really get much more damage on that top lane tower. They are 5,000 gold behind still at the 12 minute mark. They're teleporting down towards the bottom side, perhaps looking for a righteous glory play, but Soaz is caught all unaware here by Sankux and Maxlaw. I'm really not sure what Soaz was trying to do there. The wall shot comes in as well. Alfari with the flank here. Caps and Broxer, that's a taunt dodged away. Cosmic Radiance will save them for the time being. All four members of Fnatic go in vulnerable. The re-engage though from Halo oh. pops the whirling death wheel into the midst of Fnatic and Misfits die twice. Caps jumps into the back line but can't get anything and Sankux says, oh no, you don't, you're not getting nice away binding. from me. Misfits get free. Mickey is landing every single binding from this Morgana here and it's setting up so many kills. Caps dove in, thought that he could get a kill and get out. He got the kill for himself, but then that max range binding hits him and Misfits now get a mid lane turret. 7,000 gold ahead. The rage plate is delayed from Caps, and we are seeing Misfits shut down this strategy so far. 
So was, I'm not sure if they want to rush Drake here or if they thought, okay, Misfits are already in the jungle. Let's go fight them. In the end, it sets up a good fight for Misfits on their side. Nice little dodge from Source on his end, but they're finding number one. They wait out the ulti. They stay alive. They use the Lulu shielding. And Mickey flashes in for the kill. And the rest of Misfits fall. And then look at the play here. Caps knows, okay, kill Max Law. He dies in the end from the bird. But Mickey plus Senkooks. Bang. Let's kill. Mickey has been perfect with his bindings this game. We saw him catch out uh, Hillisang down towards the bottom side. We saw him catch out Caps there as well. It's a team game here for Misfits and Fnatic with this funnel strategy it's just not paying off. And remember also with the strategy from Fnatic, you kind of eliminate the normal 1v1 mid lane matchup you would have. Everyone would say Caps is a stronger mid lane than Senkooks. That doesn't matter when you do this strategy because Caps is now a mid jungle kind of thing. He's not looking to really fight anything early, he's just looking to farm. Senkooks, he's 5-0 on Lulu. He's picked this champion early and said, I can skirmish, I can fight against Caps, and I can be more useful than him in the early game. And he's been there, oh, and that's top lane kill. Once again, Mickey lands the binding on Summer gets his third kill of the game. Misfits just tearing Fnatic apart at the moment, and I am not seeing the Fnatic that can challenge for top spot, but I am seeing the Misfits that seem revitalized. Well, we're seeing uh, a meta where there is different strats you can use. A lot of hype was put around this farm, this one carry in the mid lane with Tarek. That was first picked in this game. First game, it was not banned in that first phase. And we're seeing why some teams have found good strategies to beat. It all started with the longest level one of all time. That didn't even go successful for them. But then they found other ways to invade and fight, and they got a bot lane matchup. 80 carries, crit ones, sure, not that strong. Draven Morgana versus Rakan and Janna. Like, Rakan and Janna, that's, that's a pretty garbage bot lane. Yeah. And Draven is like, yep, bam, 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 farm up some axes, get a kill, get a BF sword, go back into lane, smack. Who's gonna kill him? Just finished the Storm Razor here as oh, well. Get that extra burst damage. Just absolutely demolishes people with that first crit. I'm sure we'll have a graphic just explaining exactly what that Storm Razor does for Han Summer here. We'll bring that one up in just a moment. But across the rest of it, you've now got Senkooks with the Ardent Sensor, knowing that if he buffs, buffs Han Summer, has a little bit of damage for himself. Misfits are in a great spot. Yeah, one team funnel gold into the Kaiser, the other team funnel gold into Hansama on a Draven in the bottom lane. Here you have the item we just talked about. The key thing again, that first hit when you enter the fight, where you get that guaranteed crit for so much damage. You are Draven who's already stacking a ton of AD on your side. He will have to walk around and not auto for a little bit if he wants to get another one, but ideally the first one is where the target is already down to like 40% HP. And when you're looking at so many squishy targets as well, if he hits that on Hillisang, if oh, yeah. he hits that on Reckless, they're half HP. Reckless has 54 armor at the moment on this Janna. I really want Hansama to walk down and hit him in the face with a huge crit. See here as well, that Kaiser just not able to put out the damage he needs to yet. He's not a rage play yet. Hasn't even got the rage plate, has finished that skirmisher's saber with the blood razor though. Here's the rift held. No damage taken, so this is gonna be a massive chunk off that tower. Caps will go back, get his rage plate. Oh, actually got interrupted there, but he has to go for it. Fnatic's way back in the game is to enter a fight with the rage plate, and Caps needs to outplay everything with help from his three support. Brox is ulti. Caps can't die for a while when he flies in. Reckless ulti disengage the fight, buy more time for Caps. And Hillisang, he can set up the backline for the Kai'Sa when she engages in. That is the entire composition from Fnatic. If that does not work, then you have just been completely outplayed. Hillisang almost got two shot there by Draven, just with those whirling axes. And you can talk about how many supports Caps has, but They're look so at the rich, amount of supports. They're so rich, they can waste his control wards. If you got more in your inventory, just chuck him both down at the same time. So he's trying to dodge around. The taunt doesn't quite land there for Malfari, a little bit short, but Han Summer just looking for the tower here with the rest of the Misfits. Would be their sixth of the game. Fnatic yet to take down a structure in this matchup. Misfits once again showing they know exactly how to beat Fnatic. We talked about innovation, adaptability, the willingness to change the yeah. way you play to adapt to this new meta. And important to highlight that at this point in the game, the scary parts of this strategy where you funnel all the gold into one carry is over. Because that carry is not ahead. That carry is supposed to be one or two levels above you, complete a rage play much before we get things on Misfits to fight back and then Fnatic force a fight. 
but Caps is just way stronger than everyone else. But that's been shot down. So now we're actually watching a game where Misfits is really far ahead. They, they're no longer scared at all of this composition from Fnatic. And they can actually take any fight they want because they're mid laner, their Junker, and the AD carry are all three ahead. And we're 90 minutes in there, 11,000 gold in the lead. Baron's up in a minute as well. We've talked about how he does less damage. It's easier to take now. We'll have to see if Misfits are just wanting to set up around that Baron and then go for a push in a couple of lanes. Exactly, and really to clarify the Baron thing, like in the early game, it's a lot easier to take down. It does scale a lot more with HP, so it's going to be longer when you're on the Baron. While it does still less damage to you in the late game, you still need a lot of time to actually kill it, and that buys time for the other team to stop you. So I think really it's, you know, between 20 and 25 minutes, you really feel the huge difference because the, the Baron is still not that tanky then, and you can actually kill it fast. But uh, let's see with Misfits on their side. They can uh, effectively do whatever they want, as we just said before. The only thing they need to make sure they don't do is get singled out by Caps. Because he will deal a lot of damage to you. He's going to go Nash's Tooth now, most likely. It's going to be that standard, like, AP choice on Kaiser. But if he doesn't get to single you out and you're in a 5 on 5 team fight, the moment he jumps in, Hansama turns around and throws an axe in his face. Yeah, it's just going to be almost impossible for him to deal with that if he can't make a couple of picks. And what do you do to make picks? You try and get vision control. That's what Fnatic are doing. They push forward into this river, try to clear out those control wards, see if perhaps they can get a knock up. Maxor charmed up. The special comes out too late, but already he primed the grapple, so he's able to get away. Alfari in with the San United as well. Fnatic just have to retreat away from this fight. Well, we can see already, despite being down 11,000 gold, Fnatic are looking to fight. They know they have to take these here. They can't just give up Baron for free, then the base is gone. Hansama wants some crits. All on to Soaz, knocks him back as well. Hansama with the chase, Soaz with the flash, a great flash, double taunt. Cosmic Radiance, though, Fnatic might be able to stay alive as they run for their lives down towards this tower. West Caps. Hexago, the Maiden comes in, drops it down. Caps still alive in that front line, but Soaz is low. Maxlaw tanking up the tower, and Misfits will be settling for one kill. They took down Brox here. I'm not even sure if I should call him a jungler or support in this game, but he is dead. Now Misfits are moving towards the Baron. TP coming in, multiple of them actually from Fnatic that can join instantly. There's Hillisang and who else follows out of the clown car? No one else. Reckless it was, but he cancelled the teleport at that last moment. Misfits unable to do the Baron because of that. Hillisang still not got the quickness up, but Misfits know that they can just reset this fight, wait for a little bit longer, you said. The big scary part of this team composition is basically null and void at the moment, Misfits with this monumental goal lead, That's they can swag. teleport back in themselves. Ansama showing off for the crowd a little bit there. You have three items on Draven at 21 minutes. You are definitely allowed to look very, very, very good. If we had emotes, he'd in. be dabbing Penguin all over the place. Oh, so definitely. Dab, 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 dab. As you can see, Misfits have had the largest gold lead at 20 minutes of all time for them. 11,056 gold ahead of Fnatic. And the thing we're kind of looking for is either the Baron for Misfits or Fnatic getting a kill onto Caps. Remember with the bounties going straight to him, that's a lot of extra gold he can get to get back in the game here. And that's all Fnatic want. They want him to pick up every single bounty on the side of Misfits. They want him to get every single ounce of farm and gold because he is still behind. If I look at his gold earned in this game, it's 9,300. Hansam is on 12,000 on the Draven. That's a huge, huge difference. Senkuk's on the Lulu. It's just 200 gold behind Caps, who is the power farmer on the side of Fnatic. This is the moment he has to come up big, because that Baron has been started. Right, that's going to TP in on that Janna. Cleared out a bot wave. Here's the engage. Quickness up for Hillisang if he wants to go in. Caps down towards the bottom side. Cosmic Radiance comes out. The quickness gets onto two, gets onto Doing three. Damage. So it's in the back line. Caps is raining damage down onto Maxor. That's one. Caps still alive. Watch that Kaiser, because he's the one to make the play. Second knocks it back. That was a misplay from Misfits. Perhaps Fnatic can capitalize here. The fight continues. Hansama exhausted. Caps Kaiser is still alive. He's dead. No, he's not. He gets clapped with an axe in the back by Misfits! Reckless has to jump away and Misfits win the fray. And we talked about this here. Because Fnatic only have one damage dealer, all of Misfits are just looking towards Caps. And in the end, it's Hans Sama on the Draven who steps forward, shoots him in the face, takes him down. It fits this game. Misfits had an AD carry in the bottom lane getting fed. Fnatic had an AD carry in the mid lane getting fed. But it's been Misfits who's been ahead all game long. And Hans Sama, he takes the Baron even for his team.
24 minutes in, a 13,000 gold lead, a Baron and a Misfits team that can take out Fnatic. Let's see the fight again. It's actually Cap's first split from the team, but the Terra Gold is there. Then Source gets to the back line. He sees a low jumper, kills him. And now Fnatic thinks, okay, we need to get some kills on Caps. This is the moment. Senkus even ends up with the Blast Gun flying back, but look how the back line with Hansama is still untouched. And this Draven here is just hammering away on the Kaiser, flashes in, takes him down, showing exactly why the Misfits organization are putting all their faith in him the next three years. Oh, 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 that's the damage you want to see from your AD carry, showing us that Marksman isn't dead here in the summer split. Now he's going to push in that mid lane as well with the Baron buff, Cannon Minion there for them. No banner on the team, but they do not need it to try and break into the base of Fnatic. Fnatic got Nash's tooth, and I'm literally just going to say Fnatic got Nash's tooth. Yep, because that's what it is. Caps is Fnatic in this comp here. Uh, everyone else is purely supporting him. That is another item completed on his side. Still, of course, behind against the enemy AD carry, but. We're waiting for another fight like the last one. And then if you can remove the part where Draven threw that big axe in his face, things were looking okay for Fnatic. Oh yeah, I'm sure if Fnatic could remove Hunt Summer from the game, the fights would look a lot better for him. That is a very valid point. I don't think I can argue with that point. You usually find a way to argue with anything. Not I this one. So, 1-3-1 one, one had been started there for Misfits for a moment. They push in the bottom lane. Now Farby's up towards that top side. Has the ultimate available if he wants to join the team. Much, very much on Han Summer to try and push this lane in, get the minions there. Fnatic are willing to step outside their base at times, though, to stop the cannon minion before it gets in rage of the tower. Will they do it once again? Use the tornado. Dazzle. Han Summer dodging, dipping and diving towards the, the side. One, He's on the turret, goes down, but it caps onto him. Pop the smite onto him as well. So as has the flank here, not spotted. Remember this black shield that there's also Sinkook's buffer. And there's Caps! He's dead. He is gone now. Misfits just say, okay. You haven't got a carry anymore. You've got four supports, and with four supports, you can't do much. We're going to open up these inhibitors, we're going to take them down, and we're going to look to close out this game in the coming few minutes. Yeah, they got minions top lane as well. Nothing bot lane just yet for them, but they got more minions coming down mid. And now, the damage dealer is dead. Fnatic will have no damage. Misfits, they know, and they're going for the next turrets. One next is tower already to fall. Misfits not willing to wait for the next push. Han Summer not willing to let any Fnatic member out alive. Takes down Illusang, looking for Soas next as well. The Nexus in their sights, and Misfits continue to foil Fnatic in the regular season. They're three and zero in the last two splits. They keep doing it, man. We sat for two minutes and watched a level one fight. No one saw that little thing there. Level one. Misfits got a kill but didn't get the red buff. Caps was still able to get his early farm, but Misfits showed, wait, you, you don't have a jungler. Our bot lane can just win. And they went bot lane. Hansama gets the first kill. Hansama gets the second kill by just Mickey landing a binding. And suddenly, the entire strategy of funnel gold onto Caps and he will take over the game and be the highest level, ruined because Misfits in that bot lane and also through Senkuk's Lulu could shut it down and get so, so far ahead. Well, we, we wondered if Misfits would show their scrim performance on stage. They've definitely done that in game one. The question is whether they can continue to carry it through the rest of the split. Yeah, last split. If every game lasted 25 minutes, Misfits looked like one of the best teams we had. Sadly for them, most games did not last just 25 minutes because it was much harder to close out games and they ended up getting outscaled in a lot of them. This game, 26 minutes, 46 seconds, fit Draven, two shot in caps, and Hans Sama, he's happy. And he is, Maxwell's pretty happy as well on that. Camille had a great impact in the game, coordinating his team in the jungle. If you're Fnatic, on the other hand, I don't think you're too dismayed. This was a composition that either works or it doesn't. It's either 100% or it's 0%, and they got shut down in the early game. They'll be oh, able yeah. to go home and learn some lessons. I mean, it's week one as well yeah. for them. It, it was one best of one here, and they're used to losing to Misfits anyway. <laughs> they're like, yep, yeah, that plan. We, we win 16 other games, don't worry. <laughs> uh, though, if you are a fanatic, uh, one thing we will have to track the next few weeks is the focus on Reckless and what he wants to play compared to other teams, yep. because he's been practicing, as we showed with the graphic very quickly during the level one, tanks and, and supports in the bottom lane, and that does put even more pressure on Caps. 
Especially when they use Source, who's not going to be the big carry top laner. I actually had a look back through Reckless's solo queue records on his main account. It has been a week since Reckless played an AD carry, a marksman, in a ranked solo queue game. I'm sure they're playing it in scrims, but that is a very long time to not be playing what has been a staple for him across the last few years. And we've now seen today five games on patch 8.11. We have a week of other games from other regions to look at. Uh, we are still seeing quite a lot of AD carries being used. Again, as you highlighted earlier, the pool is smaller of the ones you can play. But we've also seen now the Janna Rakan bot lane. That didn't really work. Yeah. We've seen Heimerdinger Fiddle Six. That worked super well. Both games, it was played just perma push as much as possible. It's really showing that there are still AD carries to be played, but there are also other champions you can you can use in the bottom lane. And we now saw one attempt of the farm up our mid laner slash jungler. Farm up our carry. Farm, farm up our, our farm carry, up. yes. Uh, it was unsuccessful on the side of Fnatic. Misfits shot it down. Well, for our Max of the Week, Hans Summer, Mickey, X, and Senkux are fighting to secure player of the game. Be sure to vote for your favorite at LOL Esports on Twitter. Personally, I think I'd give it to Senkux. Like, his early game was strong. He invaded well with Max Law. It's easy to give it to Hans Summer because he I was know, playing Draven. Yeah. But I think Senkux really performed that game. I was going to predict that it was going to be like 90% on Hans Summer yeah. because he's all, he was on Draven. He got all the kills. But as you highlighted there, Senkux... The whole mid lane 1v1 is removed with this strategy from Fnatic. So he really, really looked good in this game. And he was never under pressure. Also, Mickey. Bindings, bam, 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 bam. Left and right. Almost 100% kill participation. Sadly, he got 14 oh. and there was 15. That's the worst thing as a support. If you're at like 97%. It feels Somewhere incredibly. someone died on their own. <laughs> they did. Well, we're going to send it down to Law, who's with Hans Sommer and Sankax. Thank you very much, Medic. Last game of the day and first win for Misfits. Congratulations, guys, on this one. Well, it was a tricky composition to go with, but what were your winning conditions here to put it off, Sankex? Um, I mean, a lot of people have started doing this trend of like supportive mid and with a like kind of the boost strat. Um, I mean, I don't know this game. It was just kind of weird after the little one, so it was a bit easier to play it out. I mean, the win condition is still the same as in a normal game. It's just be a bit more careful of this one guy who's a bit boosted. Not in a bad way, in the good way. <laughs> <laughs> Hans, Attila started the day by saying that marksmen were dead. What do you have to say to him now? Uh, I don't think it's completely dead, but uh, I think some uh, picks, I mean, um, some picks like Heimerdinger could work and uh, I can't wait to look out for the next week. Maybe I'll play that kind of stuff as, as well. And now you were able to finally play your Draven on stage. Now that it's a really, really strong pick, what do you think about it? What, what makes it so strong at the moment? Um, when I, uh, I was kind of last picking Draven, so when I saw those, the composition, I was like, we didn't play much Draven, I would say, in scrims, but uh, when I saw the composition, I was really confident on that pick and it just felt really free of having two squishies at bot lane. Okay, and on the other side, Senkux, with this patch, you may have to play some weird picks sometimes. How do you feel about it as a mid laner to go out of your comfort zone, maybe? I mean, I wouldn't really say it's out of my com comfort zone. I always played a lot of different stuff, and I don't really mind playing a lot of different stuff. It's fun every now and then to change it up a bit, but I wouldn't even say there's that many different picks as there usually is. So. And in general, how do you feel about these recent changes in the meta, Hans? Um, I think it's good, to be honest. It's <laughs> uh, I think it's fun to play, this meta. Okay. And the tendency seems to be short games uh, and very fast. How do you explain that, Sankex? Um, I mean, Riot did a lot of changes to try and make the games fast to last bit because they're very long, and I think with the Marksman kind of nerf as well with all these kind of different chances, but it makes the game very fast paced to some extent and a lot of times very snowbally. And do you think it has something to go with the lack of range maybe? We didn't see it that much in the LCS, but in general, Hans? Uh, you can <laughs> Or sync if you want. <laughs> can you ask again? Uh, people tend to say that the lack of range in compositions may be why the games are so fast. Do you agree with that? Not entirely. I mean, it's just marksmen usually need some more time to scale. And with the champions being played right now, it's uh, a lot of one nights and powers by kind of champs. And it's very easy to just end the game with one Nasher, basically. And another question about last split. You made a lot of mistakes. You had to work on this. Hans, we talked a bit during MSI. But can you explain maybe what did you guys work on to get better at this split? 
uh, I think we worked on a lot of things, uh, on a lot, a lot of things. Uh, mainly personally, I try to um, have more good habits and to be a better team player, having more kind of um, um, healthy life, I would say, because uh, in the last bit I didn't have that kind of healthy life and it allows me to kind of learn faster. And uh, in the last bit, I think uh, there were some, I, I think I personally lack of knowledge, I'm not sure. But uh, now I think we made a lot of additions, additions for the teams and uh, for that team, and we're pretty happy and excited about uh, the future. Well, it's starting to show already. And how about you, Sankex? Uh I mean, the biggest change is, uh, but like playing the same as we do in scrims on stage is one of the big ones for me. Um, so I want to show everyone wrong this split because everybody was giving me a lot of flag last split, so. This is kind of the redemption split for me personally as well. Understandable. And one last question for you, Hans. You made the big commitment with Misfits, and we heard about it yesterday. Why did you choose to go for the three-year deal with Misfits and stay with the team for so long? Uh, because I trust the organization, uh, organization, and I just like the team a lot. So. I'm confident we will go far. And that's a good thing to have. And congratulations to both of you for today and good luck for the rest. Now for more on that, we're gonna send it to Shox and the guys for the ERCS post-game lobby.